Hey guys, this is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer, and today we're going to model up uh, one of the panels to a hopper. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different because the uh, lofted bin is not going to come all the way up to the edge. It's going to come about 10 inches off from the bottom. So let's kind of start with that. I'm going to just do an offset plane, hold down control, drag from the top plane, pull that off about 10 inches. That looks pretty good. Uh, I am going to need where this little edge is, so I'm going to steal that. Actually, we'll just steal it off of this plane right here. We'll start a new sketch. Just going to steal that edge, do convert entities, and finish out of that. So that's going to be the top edge of that. Um, I need to know where the bottom of this thing is, but let's go ahead and finish off the, uh, the very bottom of that. That's actually on the top plane, so we're just going to do a new sketch. And we're just going to do an arc. I'm not going to make any relationships to the center of this. So we'll do a quick dimension. And I want this to be a diameter, so I'm going to pick it, right click, and do diameter. And it should be five inches. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the solid body since you know what the, uh, the hopper is supposed to look like when we're done. Let's go ahead and look normal to that. And this is only going to be 90 degrees. It's going to be a, just a quarter of that. So let's put another dimension out there. And we'll go between the three of these. And we drag that down just a little bit. There we go. And we'll do a dimension between the three of these and make it 90 degrees. All right. We'll pick on the top two endpoints of that and make it horizontal and that should fully define that arc. So it's going to be our arc on the bottom. We're going to, you know, weld that to a flange or something. So we have that. We have the very top edge. Now we need to know where the intersection of this occurs. So I'm going to do a new sketch on this plane. Now the tricky part about this is that we do have to have not only a line, but we also have to have two little arc segments. Let's go ahead and model those in real quick. They need to be tangent. So I'm just doing a selection tangent. Uh, these two arcs need to be the exact same. So make them equal. And the tops of them are going to be uh, horizontal. So that way if one gets taller, then the other one does as well. All right, they are going to be centered, so I'll just do a center line to the midpoint and center that up. Okay, and then the tricky part to this is uh, this little arc segment can be really tiny. And depending on the lofted uh, bend will depend on how small this can get. Uh, I think I can go about 0 0.03 and, and make it okay. All right, now we also need to know what the width of this is. So I need some more geometry. I know that this is always cutting in at a quarter. Okay, so then I can do something simple like this. I can just use that little endpoint, make it coincident. Coincident. Now I know I've got my 90 degrees here. And then we can grab the endpoints of these, make those coincident. And of course, this guy, let me pull that back a little bit. This needs to be 45 degrees. Because it's going to end up 45 on the other one. That makes it 90, and then it's going to go vertical on the next, the next piece. All right, let's go ahead and fix this on the other side. And then here's the trickiest part is where does this guy actually live? And we don't really know unless we have modeled him up previously. So we're just going to turn on our body there. And let's go ahead and drag that on out just a little bit. And we're just going to do an intersection curve. There we go. Intersection. And I'm just going to pick on that face right there. We'll say OK. And then you'll notice we get this little arc. It's actually a spline. We're going to make that construction. 
And then I'm gonna make this and this guy tangent. And that places it exactly where it should be on the outside of this thing. Now I've modeled up the hopper for it to be the material inside. So all my sheet metal is actually gonna to go to the outside of the hopper there. All right, and that pretty much gets me my arc and then the line and then the arc on the other side. So we'll finish out of that. And now we're ready to do our lofted bends. Let's go ahead and turn off our solid. I'm gonna go ahead and do, go to sheet metal, do a lofted bend. I'm gonna go from this guy down to that. And that actually looks pretty good. Number of bends, and I've got three in there per bend. Uh, I'm happy with that. And sometimes a preview will look good, so make sure, see I got my sheet metal parameters. I do want my bend radius to be much smaller. There we go, and we'll say okay. So that way it comes up to this little edge that looks, looks pretty good. Okay, now what I need to do is pretty easy. I'm just gonna do a new sketch on this face, and then I'm gonna steal that image right there. So we'll convert entities on that. And then we're just gonna draw some lines. Pretty easy. Uh, we're totally defined up at the top. I need to make sure that this is touching, so collinear. And then um, I can't do collinear between here and here. It should give me an error. Uh, you would think that it would go straight up that, but uh, you'll see when we do a circular pattern a little bit later, it has some weird geometry. So not collinear, but I want to do coincident. So I'm going to pick on that outside edge, pick on that endpoint, and do coincident. That's going to get me as close as I can to the outside little endpoint there. All right, we're going to do the exact same thing over here. All right, that gives us a fully defined flat sheet there. We're just going to go to sheet metal and do a base flange or tab. And should look pretty good. Now what you're gonna notice is in this little area, um, you gotta think about when we hit this on the brake press, uh, it's going to tear and kind of bend the material around there uh, as we do you know, four different bends. And if the guy's good enough to get 0.03 uh, or 30 thousandths of an inch on that, then he did good. All right, so we're nice and flat. That looks fairly decent. And now the next thing I need to do is my edge flange up here at the top. Let's go ahead and turn off that one sketch. And we don't need the plane out there anymore, so we'll hide that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on this uh, just because I don't know what the uh, angle of that is. So I'm going to go and do an edge flange. We'll pick on this outside little edge there. I can tell what the angle is just by picking a face. And we need to flip it so it's going up. And then I don't know how far that goes, so I'm gonna say up to vertex, and I'll just pick on that little vertex there. We'll zoom in, make sure it's good, make sure it's not normal or, or parallel. That looks really good. That looks good. And then uh, we'll turn off the solid body. And I will check it. Um, I have an axis in here that we're just gonna do a circular pattern. And I'm going to do bodies to pattern. And we'll do four, about 360 degrees. And so we can kind of take a look at the seam in here between the two solids there. So I do have a little bit of a gap right there. I can kind of close that up if I need to. Um, here we're dead on. Um, and that's kind of thing you may want to actually have a little bit of a gap just so you can weld it up. Uh, but then same thing down here, uh, right where these two are coming together. Um, I've, it's a pretty tight little space in between there. and a little bit of a gap there. So all in all looks pretty good. And that's how you do a hopper where the, the lofted flange is not all the way up to the top. So I hope you enjoy that. And this is Steve Darcy with Go Engineer and model on.